Hello, everyone. It is now 6 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Franco, and I'm pleased to be your host for today's session on Ryerson Engineering. This session is one of many taking place as part of Ryerson's virtual open house, which is running from November 9th to the 13th and November 16th to the 20th. I encourage you to visit our website and register for any other sessions that, are, that interest you. Now to begin, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the land Ryerson's campus stands on, the place where we work and learn. Ryerson and Toronto are in the Dish with One Spoon territory. The Dish with One Spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. Equity, diversity, and inclusion is something that is very important to us here at Ryerson University, and we'll continue to work on the path toward reconciliation. A quick update on uh, campus operations. Ryerson has shifted to an essential services model to help prevent the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have put together a series of these virtual sessions in order to share information and connect with you. Ryerson is working diligently to provide students with fulsome experiences while still maintaining the health and safety of our community. Now, before I introduce our presenter for today, I do want to go over a couple of Zoom housekeeping tips, just in case this is your first time using the platform. If you are currently experiencing some experiencing some audio or video issues, like for example, you're not hearing uh, me very well right now, please feel free to flag it in the Q&A pod, uh, which is located on the bottom of the Zoom screen. And one of our staff members will be able to assist you with troubleshooting. You may also rearrange the screen however you see fit. So if you want to make the presentation screen bigger or um, the presenter screen bigger, you may do so. Whatever you adjust on your screen will not affect the viewing experience of others. We have also enabled closed captioning to ensure accessibility. So if you do require closed captioning, please select that option also at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And also note that all of our virtual open house recordings uh, sessions are recorded and they will be available uh, for viewing on our website later on. Now, I understand that many of you uh, have a lot of questions about our engineering programs, which is fantastic. Today, our presenter, Jeff, will actually be going over everything from program information, co-op, to scholarships, and also the admissions process. So I invite you all to sit back, relax, and we'll take your questions towards the end of our session. So now, I'd like to invite uh, Jeff Capel from our Ryerson Engineering Admissions team to get us started. And welcome, Jeff. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session on Ryerson Engineering. Um, as was mentioned, my name is Jeff Capel, um, and I am a senior liaison slash admission officer for Ryerson Engineering. Uh, so basically what that means is that um, I'm pretty lucky is half my job. I get to go to high schools or, or Zoom to high schools and Zoom into your living rooms and dining rooms and talk to you about all the different engineering programs that we offer at uh, Ryerson. And the other half of my job is pretty cool because I'm actually one of the people who uh, will be making the decisions <laughs> to um, your offer. So no pressure there. <laughs> um, but the good thing about that is that you are gonna get the information from the horse's mouth. So everything I say is what we're looking for. And then in the back, I also have uh, my team and my colleagues who are fully equipped to answer any admission questions that you might have. As Franco said, we're gonna be covering a ton of information in the session. So um, hold off on your questions because I will probably get to it. If you have anything that's burning, feel free to type it in the chat. Um, but we wanna make sure that you get everything that you want and need out of this session. One of the biggest things to note is that you can download our engineering handbook um, and that's available at ryerson.ca slash askeng. So it's the website right there and that'll allow you to follow along with the session. This is also your one-stop shop website for where you can get one-on-one -on -one advising with an admission officer. You can email us. Uh, you can even get that handbook and it'll tell you about different events that we're hosting as well uh, virtually because we have a good lineup set for you. But in regards to today, we're gonna be talking about uh, engineering at Ryerson, admissions, scholarships, co-ops, student supports, the whole shebang. Uh, so hopefully you'll get everything that you need. Now, before I start, you know who I am. So I'm the admissions guy. Um, I think there's a poll already that I might have accidentally started, but just looking to see who's here with us today. Um, so, which is great. It looks like we have a lot of students who are looking for 2021 um, and some future students as well, a transfer student. So we'll cover as much as we can um, for sure. Uh, I shared the results there with you. 
And I have another poll question for you that I want to ask. Where is everyone coming from? So we're looking, are you in Toronto? I'm right downtown right now, literally about five to eight minutes from campus. Maple Leaf Gardens, the Loblaws there is my grocery store, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Uh, but I'm Zooming live from my dining room, which is also uh, pretty interesting. So a lot of Ontario, some outside of Ontario um, and outside of Canada, great. So it looks like we have a, a nice mix of people. Um, so, and I realized that I didn't share that with you. So here are the results. So kind of a mixed bag, uh, which is awesome. But either way, this presentation pretty much applies to everyone. Just when we get to the admissions section, the people who are outside of Canada and outside of uh, the province might just have a, a few different things um, that we'll be looking for. So uh, just keep that in mind, but we will cover everything for you. Um, and just moving into kind of the presentation and why we're all here. And it's really looking at why do you want to be an engineer? What is it about engineering that really kind of gets you going that you're like, hey, I'm going to give up my dinner time, although you might be at your dining room table <laughs> eating your dinner. Um, but why did you come to this session? What is it that drives you to be an engineer? Or what makes you want to be an engineer? And one thing that I like to do is get everyone kind of on the same page. How do I see engineering? How do my colleagues see engineering? And the biggest thing that we say is that engineering is problem solving. So if you love solving those problems or if you love solving problems that were already solved. So things like the Gardner Expressway, which is falling apart, right? That's a solution that's now a problem that people are trying to solve with new technologies and new products that are available and materials. Uh, so engineering to me really is kind of using math and science to solve real world problems. And with engineering, there's so many different things that you can do, whether you're inventing things, you're researching things, you're looking at structures, you could be looking at systems, you could even be looking at a process. So it's really cool about this professional degree is that you can really take it anywhere while you're even specializing in a specific major, which is awesome. Some other things that I like to point out before I kind of get into the presentation is just think about different ways that you can become an awesome engineer and what's going to make you kind of that better, more successful engineer. And this is where we like to talk to grade 12 students, grade 11 students, mature students about what are those soft skills that are really going to help you develop your career? Because if you can start working on those skills now and looking at your, your classes or looking at your projects, are you working with different types of teams? Are you looking at problem solving? Are you being creative and thinking outside the box? One of my favorite uh, soft skills to kind of hone in on and really practice on is communication skills. I myself, for the last 15 years, have been a paid communicator. So now I'm kind of stuck in my dining room, but I used to get to travel across North America to talk to different students. But to become an engineer, you also have to be able to articulate your thoughts. If you have a project that you're like, this is going to be killer, or if you're trying to sell something to a company, pitch an idea, heck, even in an interview, you have to be able to sit there and tell them how awesome you are. So I challenge you to think of these skills and how you can relate them to your grade 12, whether you're in person or online, how you, they're gonna be applied when you come to university because we have tons of labs, tons of tutorials that you're participating in. And we really wanna help you develop these, these soft skills to ensure that you're gonna be successful. So why did you actually come here? Not for me to talk, talk to you about soft skills and how much I love communication, um, but we're going to talk about the engineer that you want to be. And at Ryerson, when you go on the OUAC, you're going to see that you're going to be able to apply to nine different options, okay? Now, some of you might already know what those options are, so I have one last poll for you, and then, or maybe I don't, let's see. I might have met, oh wait, stop sharing results. There you go, Jeff. Sorry, I'm not a techie person, but what programs are you interested in hearing about? So I pop that up on the screen. Let's see, last night we did a presentation. It was a pretty much a mixed bag, which was awesome. And so these are the different options. If you don't know, that is quite all right as well. We'll keep that going for five seconds, four, three, two, one, awesome. So we actually have a pretty mixed bag here as well, which is awesome. So I'll show you the results there. Um, so everyone's kind of coming 
it, which is great. Um, and what's awesome about our engineering programs is that you can actually apply specifically to the program that you're interested in. So you're not just applying to Ryerson Engineering and then figuring it out later on. You know that from grade 12, you're able to pick aerospace engineering or you're able to pick electrical engineering and get into those programs. What's also great is that you can apply to up to three programs at one institution. So that means that you could apply to more than one Ryerson engineering program, which really does help your chances to become more competitive. And we'll go through that when we talk about admissions, but just know these are the different options you'll find. What I wanna do is just go through each program, tell you a little bit about each one and kind of something unique about that program. Keep in mind for every student going through a Ryerson engineering degree, you are gonna complete what we call a capstone design project and that's a fourth year project where you are going to apply all your knowledge to one specific area and you're going to go and solve one specific problem um, so that's a great opportunity because then you leave the university with a tangible item and you can go into interviews when they're like name a time when and you're like well that capstone design project oh, i thought about this 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 and this so a cool opportunity there but something to keep in mind that you do have that um, in your fourth year now, if you go to page four of the handbook, that's where we're gonna start with aerospace engineering. Now, aerospace engineering, super unique program to Ryerson. It's one of two in Ontario where you're getting a standalone aerospace engineering degree. Um, this is pretty much anything that flies. So if you are interested in that flight aspect, Aerospace engineering is definitely up your alley. Within the program, you're going to learn in your first two years about three different options that you can specialize in in years three and four. So you'll be learning about aircraft design, which is things like airplanes, helicopters. We even have drones as part of our curriculum. You could be looking into or specializing into spacecraft design. So that's pretty much anything that goes into space. How do we get it to space? How does it stay in space? So things like spaceships, satellites. Um, I just, just recently watched the Netflix Away <laughs> show. Um, so there are some engineers in there, so which is pretty cool. And then we also have avionics, which is like control systems. So how does the human or the pilot or the astronaut, whatever it might be, interact with the machine? So it's things like landing gear, right? How does the pilot know? Hopefully they're not just like, okay, let's try, um, or autopilot. So how does that human interact with that machine? So those are the three different areas you can specialize in and you're up on your years three and four. Another awesome program within Ryerson is something called RIADI, which is the Ryerson Institute for Aerospace Design and Innovation. And what this is, is it allows you to complete summer internships working with industry partners. So instead of going out and working for Burger King or Subway, and I, <laughs> nothing wrong with that at all, but you could go out and be working with Bombardier or Pratt & Whitney, getting that experience as early as after your first year. Um, I should also mention in the booklet, if you're on page four and then the programs go on after that, we also list uh, a group of employers or some of the employers that our students work with. So you can have a look to see if, if they're participating in Riati or co-op programs that I'm going to be talking about a little bit later on. You can see some of those employers there as well. Now, my favorite engineering program at Ryerson is biomedical engineering, and that's because I actually come from a disability studies background, and biomedical engineering is pretty much taking healthcare and engineering, and you're mushing it all together. <laughs> you're trying to find ways that people can live better, longer lives, which is awesome. So you could be looking at things like medical imaging, you could be looking at developing artificial organs, prosthetics. One uh, group for their capstone design project, they actually created a brain controlled prosthetic arm. So back in the day, prosthetics would just kind of be there, serve their purpose, but now they can be fully functioning just based on our thoughts as well. Uh, one of my favorite capstone design projects to actually talk about though, is um, the the skull drill that one of these teams, drill skull, skull drill. I always mess it up and it's been like eight years. Um, but I met these guys when I first started at Ryerson. This group did a, an amazing job where they actually programmed a drill to help neurosurgeons complete brain surgeries. So what they were doing, they programmed this drill so it can go through the skull, gross, but it was programmed to detect brain matter. So once it got a certain distance away from the brain, it would automatically stop. So this is awesome because for the surgeon, it's a less intrusive uh, brain surgery, but also for the patient, recovery time will hopefully be a lot quicker because you're looking at maybe a pinhole through the skull, right? Kind of gross. But I picture brain surgery as like a saw being like, eh, and there, there's the brain, um, but a cool opportunity for these students. And they're able to take that away um, 
once they once they leave and graduate. Now, one of the more broad engineering programs that we offer is chemical engineering. And I say this is broad because it's pretty much converting raw materials into more useful forms. So you're looking at things like making plastic stronger. You're looking at food processing. So like Mr. Noodles, right? How do we have that pocket of Mr. Noodles when we just pour water on it, boiling water, and it's a delicious meal, right? Um, also wastewater treatment plant. In a student's fourth year in chemical engineering, you'll actually create a prototype and enter it into a competition uh, to see who can have the, the, the best filtered water. You'll notice chemical engineering does have uh, the co-op in its title. And the reason for that is because it's a mandatory co-op. So you'll complete four month placements throughout your degree and you must complete those to get the degree. And they go in the typical co-op structure where you do two years of the program, you then go to a co-op for four months, you work, you get paid, you barely worry about school. Then you come back and study for four months, work for four months, study for four months, work for four months, work again for four months, study for four months. So you do get up to uh, 16 to 20 months experience before you graduate. Now, one of the more traditional engineering programs that's been around for a while is civil engineering. And the way that I describe civil engineering is it is pretty much anything that does not move. Okay, so if you are a civil engineer, you could be looking at buildings, bridges, highways, you do not want those things to move. The only time you might want to do that is if it's a drawbridge, right? <laughs> that is the only time you want um, your structure or your, your solution to move. Um, within the program, there are three different streams that you'll learn about in your first two years, and then you'll specialize in one of the three in your upper years, whether it be structural, environmental, or transportation. So it allows you to take that traditional engineering degree and then specialize into a specific area. Now, one of the more up and coming programs, if it's not already here, is computer engineering. I say that because I'm zooming into your house right now. <laughs> Creepy, right? Um, you're zooming into mine. You see the RAM right on my painting there. <laughs> my dog is just right over here. Um, but computer engineering, pretty much it's ones and zeros. Um, you're using ones and zeros to change the world. So you could be looking at things like digital systems. You could be looking at embedded systems. The biggest thing to note about our computer engineering program is that it contains software engineering and hardware engineering, and it's kind of combining both. So you're finding the marriage between the two. If you're really interested in that software engineering aspect, computer engineering does have an option where you can specialize in your upper years. So important to note, it's a computer engineering degree, which deals with hardware and software. But if you wanted that programming software side of things, you can jump into that in your upper years. Now, very relatable to computer engineering is electrical engineering. Electrical engineering is pretty much using magnetism and electricity. You're looking at the transfer of power. So you're looking at energy systems, uh, multimedia systems. So we talk about how I'm zooming, but I also have another screen over here and I'm in Toronto and I'm outside of Canada right now, apparently as well. Um, but a lot of cool options there. Within your upper years, robotics also becomes a very uh, distinguished interest for students. So we do have a robotics stream. And what robotics is, it's kind of the uh, mechanical side of electrical engineering. So if you are interested in robotics, you'd be applying for the electrical engineering degree, and then you can jump into um, robotics after that. I'm seeing a lot of questions about cutoffs and I'm gonna get to admission shortly. So just hold off. <laughs> um, one of my, or my second favorite program at Ryerson, and I swear they're not all my favorite, um, but is industrial engineering. So industrial engineering to me is kind of the business aspects of engineering. So you're learning the management side of things, but you're also learning the engineering concepts. Um, so with that industrial engineering, I think of efficiencies and effectiveness. So you really are looking at improving systems. You're looking at project management. A lot of people, when I say this, uh, industrial engineering, they think assembly lines. And that's definitely an option. So it could be looking at assembly line and how efficient it is, where a machine should be doing the work or where a human should be doing the work. But it's also looking at things like importing and exporting of goods. We had a co-op student who actually worked for, and I always confuse them, but it's either Molson or Labatt's. And they were look, working with engineers from Mexico and Germany to work on the importing and exporting uh, process. And once they were done, the boss said, okay, make it better. <laughs> um, even just down the street at the Maple Leaf Gardens Loblaws, uh, this is where um, 
I go for my grocery shopping and they used to have all these checkouts with cashiers at the end. Well, they took out three of those lines and put in 16 different self checkouts. So an industrial engineer looks at how can a company make more money? How can it be more efficient for the customer to come in and out of the, of the grocery store? So even now, back in the day, I wouldn't even just go for a bag of chips, let's say. Um, but now, especially during COVID times, I'm for sure going for just a bag of chips because I know that self checkout with 16 tellers is now going to be more efficient and more effective. So just think about those, those ways that people can make, I guess, more money for a business. Now, the last degree program that we offer is mechanical engineering. And so mechanical engineering is pretty much anything that does move. So civil engineering does not move. Mechanical engineering, everything that does. So you are looking at things like heating and cooling systems. You are looking at engines, machines, motors. Um, so things like manufacturing, thermodynamics. Within this program in your upper years, you can focus in on mechatronics. Um, and what mechatronics is, is it's pretty much the electrical side of mechanical engineering. And the best example or my favorite example to use is the accessibility doors. So you push a button and the door opens. Well, that's mechanical action, but it's using electrical engineering concepts. So it's an area that you focus in on in your upper years. Now, for those of you who aren't really sure what you want, or you're like, that Jeff guy is wacko, <laughs> but you know you want engineering, you can also apply to undeclared engineering. It's important to note that this is an entry option only, so you cannot get a degree in undeclared engineering. I apologize if I just crushed your dreams to be an undeclared engineer, but what happens is you come into undeclared engineering, and because we share a common first semester with all of our programs, you're able to take those courses and you would need to declare your major by December 1st. The reason for that is if you go to page 14, I believe it is, it might be 13, but I think it's 14 in the book, you'll actually see the, the full first year curriculum outlined. So at Ryerson, I already mentioned, we have a common first semester of the program. It's not a common first year, common first semester. So with the common first semester, whether you're mechanical or undeclared or civil, everyone's taking calculus, everyone's taking chemistry, everyone's taking intro to engineering. In that intro to engineering course, that's where you're gonna learn about the eight different degree programs that we offer. So as an undeclared student, you declare your major by the end of first semester, because in second semester, you'll notice that there are still some common courses, so calculus and physics, but then you start to specialize in your degree because we want you to get all that basic stuff out of the way in first year, so your second year is that much more enriched, okay? So undeclared, you declare by the end of first semester, and you go into your major for second semester. With that being said, if you're in a different major, let's say it's civil engineering, and you decide that you wanna switch, you also have that option as well because it's a common first semester. Now, it's not guaranteed, but in the history of history of history of history of history, anyone who has been in good academic standing, which is a 1.67, which is about a 60%, which is what you should be at least aiming for to pass your courses, has been able to switch. So in the history of history, it's not guaranteed, but people in good standing have been able to switch. So just know that that's the option. So just kind of keeping the chat in mind, I see there's a lot of talk about admissions and we are here, woo! It's only me. <laughs> so talking about admissions, uh, one important thing to note is that at Ryerson, our admissions for engineering is what we call grades only. So that means that we're only looking at your grades. We do not require you to submit a, a portfolio. We do not require you to submit a video. We don't need you to do jumping jacks, none of that stuff. What we are looking for, and this is specific to the Ontario high school students right now, so just hold on for a second, but we're going to be looking for your, you to complete or be in the process of completing your Ontario Secondary School Diploma. We're going to be looking for a minimum overall average of 80% or higher in your top six grade 12 URM courses with a minimum of 70% in each of the five prerequisite subjects being English, advanced functions, calculus, chemistry, and physics, all at the 4U level. So with that being said, it's important to note that at Ryerson, when we calculate, calculate your average, we're looking at your top six grade 12 URM courses. So for example, if you have seven courses, and let's say you have English and you're meeting that minimum 70%, but it's the lowest of your seven, we will not use it in the average. So it's your top six grade 12 URM courses. It's important to note though, that you do want to aim for those minimum 80% overall and the minimum 70 in each prerequisite. 
However, keep in mind, getting the minimum does not guarantee admission. So averages last year, and I see that there were some questions about this in the chat, averages last year were around the mid to high 80 zone, depending on the program and depending on competition. Also in the prerequisites, we required 75 in advanced functions, calculus, and physics. So just keep in mind, you wanna aim for the top. You really wanna get that 100% if you can, um, because that will increase your chances. It will also increase, again, for Ontario students or Canadian students, your uh, automatic, uh, you're, you'll be automatically considered for an entrance scholarship. Um, so there are entrance scholarships that are available. So for students in uh, Canadian schools, you'll be automatically considered with an 80% or higher, where you can get anywhere between two to $16,000. Um, those are renewable over four years. So. What you would do if you had a 95, you'd be considered for 16,000. In your first year, you'd get 4,000. If you maintained an average, you'd get $4,000 um, each year after that. Um, keep in mind, there's, these ones are automatically that you're considered for. You do not need to apply for them, but we do have additional scholarships that do require an application because they're engineering specific. So you could get another anywhere between two to $40,000, um, uh, depending on, on your grades and, and what, what application you filled out. So within that, there we will send you the application form, typically an email, but just keep in mind that applications typically are around April 1st. You'll also notice that there's a 40,000 President's uh, National Scholarship uh, that you can apply for as well. So the higher your grades, the better. Um, just keep in mind also with um, admissions, I didn't mention for anyone outside of Ontario, just keep in mind um, that you will be required to submit what we call a supplementary form, but it is not graded, it's just something to help organize your, uh, your application. Um, I'm going to jump back to the admissions as well, just to let you know how we uh, look at admissions, because I know there's a, a difference kind of now this year where people are in quad, some people are online. Um, so what we do is applications are currently open. If you're an Ontario student, you'll get a PIN number from your school where you can then start to apply to universities. For people outside of Ontario, you can start applying right now. What happens is we'll get your application and we're probably going to start making admission decisions uh, within the next month or so and we'll make them all the way until the middle of May. Uh, for Ontario students this would be important. Uh, when we get your grades, we typically get your grade 11 grades first. We'll definitely use this uh, potentially to make an offer of admission for you. We can make early offers based on that information and also seeing that you're enrolled in specific courses. Um, but also with that being said, if you're in a quadmester or a semester, you're at no disadvantage um, either, whether it's online or not. If it's ministry approved, you'll take the courses. And as we go through the admission cycle, we'll be making admission decisions. So we make admission decisions with the information that we have. As we get, let's say, your quad one grades or your quad two grades or midterm grades, we'll make more admission decisions. Also keep in mind that although we'll get your grade 11 grades, we will not hold these against you. So if you didn't do stellar, we will still be able to make uh, decisions based on your grade 12 grades as well. But we will be making those. For anyone outside of Ontario, you'll be able to submit your transcripts. And if you can submit the most recent transcripts, um, that would be great. So we'll just move along because so I just wanted to jump on that because I think people have been asking in the queue. Um, but why Ryerson Engineering? One big thing to note is that we are CEAB accredited, which is the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board. Um, so what that means is that we are awesome, <laughs> but it also means that if you want to go and get your professional engineering designation, you do have to have it from an accredited institution, which we are. We have all of our programs that are accredited. Um, and just to give me a break, I also have some students to kind of tell you why they chose Ryerson. My name is Tarab. I'm in my fourth year of aerospace engineering, and I chose Ryerson because the second I walked onto campus, I knew this is where I belonged. From the amazing community to the fostering and supportive environment, Ryerson was a great choice for me because I knew that this is where I could be the most successful. Hello, my name is John Luca, and I'm in my fourth year of the mechanical engineering program. I chose Ryerson Engineering because I love our community. Immediately after meeting students at the University Fair and Open House, I felt welcome and comfortable. After four years, I could confidently say that I still feel the same every day. 
From personalized academic support to over 50 plus engineering specific student groups, I can guarantee there's a group of people here to make your experience just a bit better. Plus, having our campus in the heart of Toronto is pretty amazing. Agreed, love being in Toronto. Um, but also another reason uh, why Ryerson is our be all in approach. So I talked a little bit about this, I think at the beginning where we talked about those soft skills and how Ryerson really wants to help you develop those skills. Um, and one way that we do that is just ensuring that you're kind of get that well-rounded degree. So we have labs and tutorials with every lecture that uh, we offer. Um, I also talked about how chemical engineering has a co-op, but all of our other programs have co-ops as well. So there's a great opportunity to get that work experience before you graduate. And we have another video just talking. Hi everyone, my name is Leah Roth and I'm in my fifth year of chemical engineering at Ryerson University. Over my time at Ryerson, I've had two co-op placements, one at Nova Chemicals in Mississauga and the second at the Woodbridge Foam Corporation. Two key takeaways I've gotten from these placements have been how to relate what we learn in school back to the real world. And the second is the importance of initiative, because in order to get the most out of these placements, you need to create your own opportunities to learn. And you do this by taking on as many different tasks as you feel that you're able. Hello, my name is Renee Shaw, and I'm currently in my fourth year of the computer engineering program at Ryerson University. I'm currently doing my internship at IBM as a cognitive software developer, part of the IBM Federated Learning Team. My favorite part about my internship so far has been getting the opportunity to learn from industry professionals and being able to contribute to federated learning projects. And some of the skills that I've learned throughout this have been Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes, OpenShift. I've learned a new programming language called Scala, and I've been able to explore technologies such as IBM Cloud and IBM Watson Machine Learning. Awesome. I love that he had a I Heart AI shirt on. It was awesome. Um, so talking about co-ops, there is a co-op option for all of the engineering programs that we offer. I talked about Chemical already, how it's a mandatory co-op and you'll complete four month placements throughout the degree. With all of the other programs, you won't see the co-op option on OUAC because it's optional. And you don't need to decide right now because the way that it's structured, you'll actually complete your co-op after your third year of study. So you'll do three years of the program. You'll then go and work for your fourth year and get paid. You don't worry about school that much. And then you come back for your final year, turning the four-year program into five years. Um, what's great about that, though, is you're working with a company on lo longer projects, and it's after your third year. So you're that much closer to being an engineer. So the projects are hopefully going to be more in-depth. Uh, if you're interested in a co-op, you get in touch with your department in the, about the summer after your second year and the beginning of your third year, and they'll talk to you about different ways that you can take advantage of our resume workshops, our interview workshops, the job boards that are available. So um, there is a lot of opportunity and a lot of support to gain those co-ops. And I mentioned in um, the booklet, if you go back to the program pages, you'll actually see the industry partners that some of our students work with and some of the jobs and the job title, excuse me, that our students get. So there is co-op, it's an option if you wanna do it for anywhere between eight to 16 months, which is great. Another way that we wanna make sure that you're the best engineer that you can be is by supporting you. So we understand that the transition from high school to university will be an interesting one. Um, so we've actually developed the first year engineering office, which is dedicated to the first year class um, and the first year students. So within that office, they go as far as registering you for all of your first year core engineering courses where you just have to register for your one liberal studies course. Within there, we have academic advisors, we have personal counselors, we run transition programs. So even in the summer, we ran a boost program where within that was a math mini course, a physics mini course, and a programming mini course, which happened during the months of July and August. So you can definitely take advantage of that. The first year office will tell you all about it in the summer. You'll also see on the screen our first year um, ambassadors for engineering. So they're active right now you can go to the website and even email one of them if you see someone in a year or a program or a background that you're really interested in you can connect with current students right now another way to get involved and i highly encourage this aspect is becoming a part of a team or a club and within our engineering programs we have options for any 
program that you're in, there's a club or a team that's associated with it. So if you're looking at something like a concrete canoe team, where these are a bunch of students who built a canoe out of concrete so it can float and they can get in it and go across Lake Ontario. Um, the Formula Racer, they build a race car from scratch. Um, and this year, they're actually building their first electric race car, which is kind of cool. The important thing to know with this is that you don't have to be in a specific program to be in a specific club. So something like the Formula Racer, you might think is mechanical, but we have mechanical students, computer engineering students, electrical engineering students, business students for marketing in that club as well. Something important to note is also RES, which is our Ryerson Engineering Student Society. So they're like a student camp council on campus where they pulled off an awesome online orientation this year. They run different charity events and they really do make sure that you're um, super involved in the Ryerson community. So great different ways to get involved. And we have the Associate Dean who actually will say a few words and show you some videos um, of these teams as well. Hello everyone. I'm very excited to share our student experience with you through this video. I certainly look forward to celebrate your success as one of our own students in the very near future. Student team is one way through which we engage our students in activities that promote their analytical skills and allow them to apply what they learn in classroom to real life situations. They do so in an environment that is enjoyable, safe, inclusive, and full of innovation. Members of Ryerson Formula Racing Team work together to design and build a formula style race car. Every year, our team compete in a number of racing events, including the annual Michigan competition of Formula Society of Automotive Engineers. Ryerson Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Team design aerial vehicles that can be used to deliver medical supplies or collect data about wildlife. Through the design process, team members learn how to think out of the box and challenge themselves. Our robotics team design robotics that have multiple applications and the potential for a positive societal impact. Members expand their practical engineering abilities, which will enable them to contribute to the industry upon their graduation. Chemical e-car team applies state-of-the-art technologies towards the design of a sustainable car. In addition to expanding on their technical skills, team members aim at increasing awareness of the chemical engineering discipline among the general public and youth in particular. The concrete wagon team use, use concrete and other construction materials to design and build a safe, fast, stable, lightweight, and strong to work. Their design captures different disciplines of engineering, including structural and material design. Awesome. So hopefully that just gave you a glimpse as to what some of our student teams do. Um, it's great because they actually get to go and compete against other universities as well. Um, but with that being said, it pretty much covers everything that I want to talk about and what I think is really important when you're trying to choose an engineering program, um, specifically, hopefully, at Ryerson. Uh, but just to reiterate, my name is Jeff Capel, and I'm one of the admission officers for the engineering programs here. Uh, our one-stop shop website is ryerson.ca slash askeng. Again, if you have any questions about your application or you're not really sure about um, what program or you're not sure about what's going on with your application, on that website, you can actually book a one-on-one -on -one, uh, Google Meets uh, appointment. You can also see any upcoming events that are happening. Also, I'll leave you with our email, which is askeng at ryerson.ca. Um, and that literally will go to four of us in the office. So we're constantly checking that email. We're pretty good at getting back to people within 24 hours. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to let us know we're definitely here to help. It's kind of cool that I get to zoom into your house, uh, talk to you a little bit of it, and then we're the ones who are making the decision. Um, also speaking about different opportunities and events that are happening, right after this, so I'm literally like logging off at some point in about 10 minutes to jump into our co-op session. Um, and then we also have our engineering student experience, uh, which is happening in two weeks. So if you wanted to register for any of those, uh, don't worry, I'm only gonna speak for like five minutes in each of them, so you don't have to hear me again. But there's the website at the bottom. It's uh, actually probably the same website that you registered for this event 
today, but there are different options to learn a little bit more about the student experience and what uh, you can get involved in at Ryerson. Um, so with that being said, we're gonna leave it at the, oh, how did Jeff get his position? I just saw on the Q&A. Um, we're gonna leave that there. I think Franco might be coming back, um, but I see that a lot of questions have been answered, which is awesome. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, thanks, Jeff, for that presentation. Um, there is one thing, uh, wondering if you can help us uh, answer or talk a little bit more about. We did receive a lot of questions tonight about early offers of admission. Um, so you could, can you tell us kind of how that works? What's that process like? Yeah, so early kind of means in the next few weeks, we're literally wrapping up our recruitment season, which is a little bit sad, but um, I'm in my dining room. People start looking at applications probably within the next month or so, um, probably maybe even sooner than that. But what early admissions just basically means that if you did apply, we will try to make admission decisions based on the information that's provided. So for an Ontario student, that means getting your grade 11 grades. We will look at those. And if you have a competitive average, um, typically let's say 85 or higher, but there's many factors that come into play, we might be able to offer you admission. Um, if you don't receive an offer, do not worry because we are constantly looking through applications and as information comes available and as we find that more competitive grades are available, we make more offers of admission. Um, again, don't worry if your grade 11s aren't great, we will not hold them against you. Um, so we will see them, we might look at them and be like, oh, <laughs> but then we'll wait um, until we get quad one, semester one, quad three. We will make our admission decisions to all Ontario high school students by the middle of May, but we don't deny any Ontario high school students until May. So we're always looking at your application. Sometimes my boss is even up at 8 p.m. and is like, I want to make some offers. Um, so, and she does that. So um, we're definitely going to start the process soon, but we can't offer you unless you apply. So if you have your PIN number, go ahead and apply because applications are available. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeff. Actually, another question that just came up is, I, I don't know if this was mentioned in the presentation, but when is the due date for the applications? When should our students be applying for? Like, when should they apply by? Yeah, so for um, Ryerson, it would be the deadline technically is February 1st to apply. Um, I know that we also, um, for Ontario students, so February 1st is the equal consider consideration deadline. I know there's also published a mid-January deadline typically, and that's just to get your applications in. I usually recommend applying over Christmas because you're kind of just chilling. You're like, where do I want to go? What do I want to do with the rest of my life? Um, but February 1st technically is the deadline for equal consideration. But um, usually we say about, I think it's January 11, 12, 13 around this, um, this year. So just keep that in mind. Awesome. I think that we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Um, thank you, Jeff, for joining no us problem. here today. Um, so everyone, I do also encourage you, we do have that second session with uh, Engineering Co-op. If you haven't signed up for that, I do recommend you go onto our virus and at home website and sign up for that just to see kind of what uh, positions and what that experience is like um, being a Ryerson uh, engineering co-op student. So we're now gonna be shutting down our audio and video, but we're still gonna be online until the end of the hour. Um, so please continue submitting your questions and our team here on the back end will get you an answer. I encourage you also, if you received an answer to a question, um, make sure you save that answer because once I end this webinar, you will actually lose that answer. So make sure you're, uh, you're you have an opportunity to uh, get that answer recorded. So I'm gonna add one thing. The go. way I got my job is that I was super involved in university. So I was in residence, I was a Don, I was a first year orientation leader and I learned communication skills. So literally I have, I won't name the institution but I have a degree in disability studies but I'm recruiting now for engineering because of well this, but also because <laughs> I'm able to talk and communicate and articulate. So get up there and present and be involved in teams and share your ideas because you never know where your career will take you. But with that, I have to go to co-op. So I'll see you guys later. <laughs> yeah, Jeff. yeah, that's actually a really great point that he brought up. Uni your, your university experience is not just, um, I mean, yeah, you're, you're here to study and, and learn about your subject area, but 
there's so much more to the university experience than just studying and exams. There are always fantastic student groups, like a lot of the uh, design teams that, uh, that Jeff brought up in our engineering faculty. I know some of them even actually go abroad and they participate in a lot of different competitions that way too. So again, thank you everyone for joining us here today. Again, please continue submitting any questions you have about our engineering program. Again, our team in the back end are, are happy to, to give you an answer to your question. On behalf of Ryerson, everyone here, Jeff, who just presented, thank you once again for joining us here today. And we hope to see you in other sessions later this week. Bye now.